Hello all my JavaScript friends, this is the Virtuoid, aka Mike Smith, and this is Fun with JavaScript, our jigsaw puzzle game. Well, after an entire month of wailing and gnashing of teeth, as you can tell, I've got it all figured out. I can't imagine it taking me an entire month to be able to figure out how to put together two pieces. But in actuality, that was the easy part. The hard part was trying to figure out how to put two pieces together that were not square. For instance, if you had a piece, they had three pieces put together that formed a little corner, how would you get the second, how would you get the fourth piece inside there? Well, that was the major problem. And I must have gone through a thousand different iterations, an entire month's worth of work. Something that was so easy ended up being so difficult. But as you can tell, I finally got it all finished up. So what this video is going to do is just going to give you a brief overview of the solution that I finally came up with. So let's get started. Originally, I had three classes, and these three classes basically were the piece, the puzzle, and the vertex. And of course, the puzzle defined the entire puzzle, and it was made up of pieces, and pieces were made up of vertexes. And in my particular case, a vertex would be the upper left-hand corner, upper right-hand corner, lower left-hand corner, and lower right-hand corner of a particular piece. And vertex really had absolutely nothing associated with it except that it was basically a vertex. And the reason for that was is I, I could imagine later on that a vertex would have associated with it possibly graphical material. So I didn't want to define the vertex to have anything hard-coded with it at the base vertex class. So I wanted to be, I, I wanted to make a extended class to be able to handle all the graphics. So no big deal there. So of course I created a graphics puzzle, a graphics piece, and a graphics vertex to represent all the different pieces of information. The graphics puzzle will have all the DOM information associated with the puzzle, you know, the width, height, the board, and all that kind of fun stuff. A graphics piece would have the DOM uh, associations with it for the, uh, for each individual piece. And in this case, I had just a span. The span happened to be absolutely positioned within the puzzle. And then, of course, I had the vertexes themselves, which would be associated with the upper left-hand corner, upper right-hand corner, lower left-hand corner, and lower right-hand corner of each individual piece and have the coordinates of, this partic of these particular pieces. And that, once I got that done, I figured, okay, that basically creates everything I need to, to work with to get everything going. But at that point, I started running into issues, and here are the issues I ran into. So the first problem was how to do the vertexes. So for example, each piece had four vertexes, one in the upper left corner, right corner, uh, lower left corner, and lower right corner. And when I got two pieces to put together, it was very simple. I basically compared the upper left-hand corner to the upper right-hand corner of the other piece, and if they were within three pixels of each other, it was basically a connection. And that was great. The issue came in is what happens when I try to put a third piece in there, like for instance on the bottom. All right, I've got the four vertexes in the piece I'm dropping. Uh, what vertexes do I compare? I've got basically eight vertexes in this one piece. If this one piece represents two different images, which of course it, which of course it does. So where, you know, what vertexes am I going to compare to? And so that was, that was the first attempt at trying to solve the problem is that a lot of these issues that I ran into was because I was hard coding these vertexes to be these particular individual corners. And so I really, you know, I, I and, and so it was impossible to be, well, not impossible, but it was extremely difficult to be able to relatively say, hey, I've got this second piece here that how do I compare it to these group of other pieces when all the vertexes are named the same? So that obviously did not work. So then I got to thinking about the vertexes themselves because I, I, I really believe that the vertexes were the solution to everything. Because I know for the future, you know, with a jigsaw puzzle, they are not all square of them. You know, you got the really fancy looking jigsaw puzzles that have the, uh, the, the that have the, you know, the, the point, you know, insert slot A, you know, or, or insert tab A into slot B type, type deals. And so I want to be able to draw that real nice, nice and fancy one. And I can do that with Bezier curves really easy between two different vertexes. It's really, really easy to do. So I know I needed to have those vertexes there, but how do I get them to know about each other? But then I got to realizing, let's put two pieces together and think about this for a second. Now, each one of these pieces have four vertexes, right? No, they really don't. 
if you put these two pieces together, they actually have six vertexes or vertices actually is the more correct term. In the piece on the left, you've got the upper, you got the upper left the, and the lower left. In the piece on the right, you've got the upper right and the lower right. What about the piece, what about the vertexes and the, the vertices in the middle? Well, before we would have a, we had the, on the right hand side, we had the upper, the upper left and the, and the uh, lower left. And on the right and the left, we would have the upper right and the lower right. But I got to, I got to realize here that when you put those two together, in reality, we have two vertices. We have the top middle vertice and the bottom middle vertice. And so I was thinking, aha, there's, there's the issue here. So I still need to know whether a vertice is, a, is basically a, um, you know, what offset it, offset it is, whether it's in the upper left-hand corner, or lower right-hand corner, you know, what, what kind of offset, you know, zero, one, and the puzzle with and all that. But I don't have to have separate vertices for each puzzle. These two puzzle pieces could, to, should be able to combine the vertices. So I created what I called a vertex info, info object in which it basically contained a vertex plus some information about that particular vertex, just with a normal set. And the idea here was that the lower left-hand corner of piece number one would have a vertex. The lower left-hand corner would have a vertex. The one the upper right hand corner of the first piece would have a vertex at a certain position the upper left hand corner of the second piece would have the exact same vertex but at a different position so i would have two different objects which will point to the same vertex and that's when things are starting to kind of gel here so when i put two pieces together i would have vertex one vertex two vertex three and the vertex three and four in the middle, and then five and six on the right-hand side. Now, within each individual piece, I would have one, two, three, and four, and three, four, five, and six. Those would be the two I would have, I would have separate, you know, separately, but the information that is contained within the, the third vertex, the, the number three vertex of the first piece, and the number three vertex of the second piece, although there are different objects, they would point to the same vertex. And that was one of the keys of being able to figure out how I can get them put together correctly. I can then be able to, once I put those two together, I have those six vertices, and then I can be able to bring in another piece and it has another vertex. It has another vertex map within it in which the two vertexes and the up, the, up, the two upper vertexes on the left and the right uh, will all, will, match the two vertexes or vertices. I keep saying vertexes or vertices, my apologies. Vertexes, vertices, I don't know. Anyway, so they would match each other and that will allow me to say, okay, even though I've got technically this one large piece that has six different vertices in it, I will then just search the four vertices that are within the piece that I am dropping on the bottom and that will then allow me to just, just go through the piece that I'm dropping it to and just check for those four vertices. Once I find those four, four vertices, I then know which ones are closer to each other based upon the physical location within the board. And so what that will allow me to do then is if I had two really large pieces that were just jumbled all over the place, they should be able to fit perfectly within each other. And once I figured that out, I was sitting there thinking, huh, that might actually work. And so I, 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 I had to admit, I went back to the old school and I got out a sheet of paper and I literally mapped out a four by four square, put the row column numbers in the square and put the vertex numbers for each one of the vertices within the, puzzle, within the square itself. And I've, I've got a picture of here of the actual uh, sheet of paper that I used. It kind of helped me visualize what I was trying to do here. And once I got that visualization, I suddenly realized this might actually work. Now, implementation of it was a little more difficult side because what I also realized was is I was really hard coding a lot of stuff within the graphics piece. And that, that was stupid because eventually I want to be able to say, hey, I'm going to have different cuts or different number of pieces for a particular puzzle or different styles, what, what I meant by cuts, different styles of, of pieces. So I created then a, a new class called a pattern class and this pattern class is basically has all of the information within it to say okay I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to cut it up into a certain number of pieces using a certain shape 
and then the pu the graphics puzzle will then communicate con constantly with the the pattern and basically say okay pattern i need you to cut cut it for me i need you to shuffle the pieces shuffle it for me i've got a piece here that i am dropping i'm dropping it here please tell me if it's close to something so the the pattern JavaScript will then be able to sit there and kind of control how everything is cut. And that will allow me later on, if I want different size, different number of pieces or different cuts, to be able just to pop in a new pattern and everything should automatically work like a champ. That will conclude this particular video. Uh, so our next video will be actually diving into the code. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please click on the like button below. If you wish to keep informed about new content, click on the subscribe button. And as always, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Again, thank you very much for watching. This is The Virtuoid, aka Mike Smith. We'll see you later.